What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Barefoot Garage and the underneath side of my 914. Today we're going to attempt to install a crank trigger wheel behind the fan of my Type 4. we're under the 914 we got this thing nice and jacked up and we are pulling apart some of the cooling shroud and some of the fan system so that we can hopefully get this crank trigger in here without having to pull the engine out I would love to do that because it would save a bunch of time I'm pretty good at pulling the engine out I can do it in like an hour by myself but I really don't want to have to break the seals on all the CVs and the exhaust and pull the shifter out and just I like to avoid doing that if I can. So we're going to attempt to do this with the engine in place. I don't know if it can be done. I don't know if it's been done before, but that's what we are trying to do. So let me show you what we're working with here. All right, we are under my 914 on these wonderful jack stands, which were recalled, but these are the good ones. So we're good. Um, this is the front of the engine. I'm going to try and get the light and the camera up there. You can see the fan. You can see the three bolts that hold the fan. If we take those three bolts out, there is a spacer behind this fan, and this sensor replaces that spacer. So you can probably tell I have the camera up in this area, but I can't really get my face up there. So we're going to be doing some of this work a little bit blind. I'm very hopeful that this will work, but I have went ahead and pulled down a piece of the cooling shroud. You can see it hanging up there in the engine bay um, so that we can get to this. There's a piece that seals right around this uh, uh, perimeter seal here. So we're going to go ahead and pull the three bolts of the fan off, see if we can get access to that hub, and then we're going to take a look at the bracket that holds it all together. All right, the fan is out, three bolts, wiggle it out. This is the washer that we're replacing with that sensor. You can see it's got a locating dowel and three bolts. Now let's go to the car and I'll show you where we're at with this. All right, this is what we're working with. I can't even see this, so I'm not sure if you can, but there is where we are trying to put this sensor. Um, I don't think this is gonna happen. I'll be honest, it may be possible, but I think I'm gonna waste more time trying to do this in the car in this kind of a position than it would be to just pull the engine out. So let's take the time lapse, let's pull the engine out and do it on the bench, and I'll be able to show you guys even better. All right, doing the sensor in the car, not gonna happen. So the engine's coming out. The last time this engine was out was September 2018, I think, uh, something like that. And so it's gotta come out, and so we're gonna put myself on the clock. I just looked at my phone, it is 9.31. The only things I've done is get a few tools ready and uh, the stuff that I took off earlier, uh, so not a huge amount of help. So let's see if we're gonna do it in an hour. Let's go. check-in it is 10 30 or 10 15 10 05 something like that a little after 10 o'clock it hasn't been an hour yet i'm pretty much on uh connected on the top and the bottom i'm gonna leave the heat exchangers in because i can't find my 13 mil non-deep socket so they gotta stay um so i'm gonna go ahead and get jack trans jack hooked up and try and bring it out the bottom let's go
59 minutes and the engine is out Woo! that was a workout Whew, i'm out of breath i just made it those cv joints can kick your butt leaving the heat exchangers in save like 20 minutes so that was definitely a win so let me get all cleaned up and we'll take a look at that sensor all right now that i've recovered from the 59 minute engine pull let's take a look at what we're doing here so i am gonna need to access a bolt that's up here honestly it's out of the car at this point i may as well just do it so we're gonna take this shroud off 413s here a couple tens up here you'd have to remove the alternator and two bolts over here and then we'll pull this off then we can actually see what's going on with our sensor <laughs> Okay, pro tip, don't forget the seven millimeter, not a millimeter bolt on your flaps here. You have four 13s in the middle, two over here for the oil cooler, and that should be it. Let's see what we got. All right, now that we have got our engine out, let's take a look at the front of the Type 1 engine. Big difference in this and the Type 1 is the uh, Type 1 has the fan and alternator generator way up here. The Type 4 is totally flat. This is the fan. It shrouds up here and through the engine. So where we're actually going to be putting our sensor, our crank trigger, is behind this. So I've already pulled this off. It's got three bolts. So we get one hand this off here. It has a nice snug fit. And then there is a washer. This is where the pulley for air conditioning would go if you had that on your car. Uh, now, if you have air conditioning, you'll need to talk to the dub shop about how to get this to fit, but I don't, and if I do, I will be going with a electric air conditioning, so this washer can come off. Our crank trigger is actually gonna sit right here, and then our fan will sandwich that back in place. So let's take a look at the dub shop kit, and then we'll see how I'll get it put in. All right, here's everything you get in the dub shop kit. You get some washers, you get these uh, special kind of long nuts, you get a bracket, you get the sensor, and you get the crank trigger wheel. So this has two positions, a one and a zero. Uh, they list the zero for Haltech and the one for like the dub shop kits that they put together. So um, I don't yet know enough about how that's gonna work and what the differences are, but we're gonna put it in the zero position on the uh, locating pin here on our little, um, hub on the crank. So this bracket goes just like that. So we're going to go ahead and take off the two 13 millimeter nuts, slide this in place, bolt that down, and then uh, we'll see about putting the sensor in the right spot, get it all lined up with the uh, crank trigger wheel, and then we'll probably try and turn the engine over to make sure that it runs uh, the sensor and it gives us the correct signal. Here's our trigger wheel. It is literally machined to say this side to engine. I don't know if you can read that. This side goes that way. We want number zero because we're doing a Haltech installation. So that's gonna bolt on there like that and then the fan bolts will sandwich this in place. So the gap we're looking to measure is this gap right here. All right, so I'm just gonna use my calipers here. I'm gonna use the little pokey end and we are going to measure from there. Put that on nice and straight. I'm getting that at about four millimeters. So I'm gonna bring it as far forward as I can and then we'll see what that looks like. and check our distance. I'm confident we brought it up at least uh, two millimeters here. So we'll pop that on. We are now 
would say now we're looking at 2.77. So the closest position is going to be the best uh, because this is really critical to the engine running. I'm going to pop these nuts off, make sure it's all the way forward and put some Loctite on it. And I'm going to make sure that that is the correct orientation of this sensor. I've never used this kind of a sensor before in any installation. So I don't know if it needs to be out on the teeth on the end, if it needs to be closer in like this. The other thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and make sure that it rotates over. That this is nice and flat, straight, and there's not going to be any chance of contact with our sensor here. So throw some Loctite on there and then we'll take a look at this sensor. And there it is. That is the Dub Shop Type 4 crank trigger installed. Now we are going to go through the test process. I've just temporarily kind of wrapped some uh, cloth tape on here. I got my wires coming up through my oil pressure sensor hole. Uh, other part I didn't show you is the distributor plug. Uh, we're going totally distributorless and I wanted to put that in there before I took it out so it didn't drop any debris down into the distributor drive. So just cut a little o-ring piece and uh, took the clamp out and that just sits right there. So I've got my air gap just right. I've got my sensor. It is in the all the way forward position. I hope that is the right alignment of that sensor on the teeth. Um, but uh, I'm going to get a battery set up. I will explain the process that they get. So I got to get a meter, get a battery, get some alligator clips, and then we're going to bump the motor over and see if we can get it to give us a signal. All right, let's explain the test rig. So since I don't have the fan on here, I just put some tape to keep this as far back as it needs to go. Here's what I got. I got an old battery, um, but got plenty of juice and I have my sensor hooked up. The red wire on the sensor goes to the positive. The black wire on the sensor goes to ground. The black and white wire on the sensor goes to the positive lead of my multimeter. And the black lead on the multimeter also goes to the ground. So what we are watching for is when the sensor is in between teeth, it should be at the source voltage, same as the uh, battery. When I turn it, let's see if we can do this with two hands here. When I turn it slightly and a teeth comes, it should be below a quarter of a volt. When I go to the next gap, back to source voltage. And so I am watching carefully to make sure that each tooth causes that, that effect and each gap gives me the correct source voltage. Now, I didn't take the plugs out, that was kind of lazy, but that's what we're looking for. So sensor hookup, red to the hot, black to the negative, white and black to your meter, meter grounded, and that is the setup. So make sure you take your time to do this. In my car, I'll be honest, if I didn't do it right before I put all this back together, the engine is coming back out, which I don't wanna do. So let's go ahead and button up the front of the engine here. I'm gonna go ahead and check that it goes around and that everything seems to clear and I'm getting that appropriate signal as I continue to rotate the engine here. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And we will button it up. Cool setup, cool product from the dub shop. Dub Shop Type 4 crank trigger installed. I'll be honest, from outside the engine, that is the only way that you're gonna be able to tell. Uh, originally, I was thinking possibly you could get this done in the car, and I believe that might be true for a bus, but definitely not for a 914. So for my 914 guys that are gonna try to repeat this or do something similar or put this system in for whatever type of fuel injection you're trying to do, 
pull the engine out of the car. It's just worth it. Figure out some other things. I found like three other things that are broken. I'm gonna put a new alternator harness on it. It needs a swing arm bushing. Uh, maybe I'll change the starter, or some motor mounts, so just like stuff like that that will have it out of the car. If you think you're going down this road, it may be worth next time you're doing something major on your car, you have the engine out, put it in. And don't even worry about it, leave it hooked up and leave it in there so that when you do go down the road for fuel injection or you're ready to make some upgrades, simple plug and play. I don't expect that it's gonna wear out of any time soon. It's a super simple magnetic little switch. So that's gonna do it for the Barefoot Garage tonight for the Dub Shop Type 4 crank trigger wheel install. That's the biggest thing that we need to get into the engine for our fuel injection installation. So I hope the engine's going back in here in a couple of days. Uh, I'm gonna do a little cleanup on the firewall, little firewall padding, and uh, a couple of other little things that I found. The swing arm bushing is totally shot on one side, even though it's already been replaced once. Um, but we're gonna address some of that stuff while the engine's out of the car. It's up in the air, I have some time. Uh, and so we're gonna go ahead and try and take care of some of those things. So as always, stay tuned to the Barefoot Garage and to our DJ Delete project here on YouTube. Let us know what you're working with in the comments and what kind of things you're doing to your 914. And stay tuned to the between episodes at the Barefoot Garage Jacks over on Instagram. See ya.